Step 5. Complex form. Now we're going to conclude this lesson with rewriting the Fourier series not in terms of its sines and cosines, but in terms of complex exponentials. It just turns out that this form is a lot more easier to handle and more convenient. So how do we do that? Here is our Fourier series in terms of the cosines and sines. So we've got a sum, n, goes, n starting from 0, going all the way up to infinity, some weights for the cosines, ans, and some weights for the sines, the bns. But we know by using Euler's formula that all these basis functions, the cosines and the sines, can be re-expressed in terms of these complex exponentials. In particular, cosine nx is equal to a half of e to the i nx plus e to the minus i nx, while the sine is equal to the difference of the two complex exponentials divided by 2i. So what we do is we just substitute them into our Fourier series and see what happens. The function fx then becomes the sum over the following. After some uh, rewriting, we've got this combination of coefficients here. We've got 1 over 2 times a n minus i b n times the exponential e to the i n x. And then we've got the complex conjugate of uh, uh, the combination of coefficients. 1 over 2 times a n plus i b n multiplying e to the minus i n x. So what we can do is we can just take these coefficients and rename them. We're going to call this one cn, and we're going to call this one c minus n. So why are we doing that? We are doing that because now here we've got our basis functions in terms of these complex exponentials. Here we've got e to the i n x. So we call this coefficient cn because it represents the nth harmonic frequency. While here, we've got minus i n x. Therefore, we label this co combination of coefficients as c minus n. So you see, by moving into the uh, a complex form, now we can write the sum over n as going from minus infinity to infinity of some coefficients, some complex coefficients c n times are uh, complex uh, exponentials e to the power of i and x. And this is the complex form for the Fourier series. So given any function, how do we obtain these complex coefficients cn? That's pretty simple, and we use orthogonality of functions again. But this time we're dealing with complex functions, so we have to extend our inner product to complex functions as well. And that's very simple to do. The form of the uh, uh, inner product for functions remains the same, but now we have to take the complex conjugate represented by this star over the f over there. So it, the inner product for complex functions is given by the integral from minus infinity to infinity, conjugate of the function f of x times g of x, and uh, we are integrating over x. So we start with our with our complex Fourier series, given by f of x, and we multiply by the exponential e to the minus i k x. We are picking this minus because of how we defined our uh, inner product of complex functions. And we are integrating over our period, which in our case is still minus pi to pi. So let's evaluate this integral. We substitute our uh, sum, our complex Fourier series of fx, and we get the following expression. So you see that here we have the following exponential. We've got e to the power i and the difference n minus k times x. So that can be evaluated relatively easily and we get the following sum. Now it's not very obvious what this sum looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to first simplify this expression right here. And we're going to do it graphically again. So let's investigate this function. It looks a little bit like this. There is a peak, and then there, is, there are these smaller dying uh, oscillations to the side of the peak. Let's look at a particular case. Let's look at a case when k is equal to 0, and n can be anything. We know that n is an integer going from minus infinity to infinity, 
but just to, for this graphical investigation, we are assuming to be n to be a real number from minus infinity to infinity, and we plot uh, our complicated function here. And we see that when n is equal to zero, so at the place of the peak, the value of the peak is given by two pi. So what happens when n, e n is equal to one? n is equal to two, n is equal to three, or minus one, minus two, minus three? Well, we can see that whenever n is an integer, the graph crosses, crosses the horizontal line, it crosses the x-axis. Therefore, for any n uh, being an integer that's not equal to k, this function tells us that it's zero. How about for different k? Let's say that we pick k equals two. What happens then is this peak now moves from the position n equals zero to position n equals two. So again, our intuition from this case still holds. When n is equal to k, we've got our peak, and the function is uh, two pi, and at any other integer value for n, for example, n equals three or n equals zero, the function is equal to zero. So from that, we can conclude that this function right here is equal to two pi times delta n k. So it's zero whenever n is not equal to k, and when n is equal to k, it is equal to two pi. And that immediately helps us evaluate this sum, and we see that the whole integral becomes two pi times c k. And there we have it. We have just derived the complex coefficient for the Fourier series in the complex form, and it's given by the following integral. It's cn is equal to one over two pi times the integral over our period, the function that we are trying to uh, um, expand in its uh, complex Fourier form, and times this complex exponential, e to the power of minus i nx. So far, we've been talking about functions with period two pi. Of course, we can extend this to a different, uh, uh, to any period t. Consider the following function. Consider sine of two pi nx over t. What's the period of such a function? That's very easy to verify that. If you change x to x plus capital T, then by following this expression here, by expanding the, the parentheses, we get that the sine of two pi nx over t plus 2 pi n. And we know that the sine is a, a 2 pi periodic function, therefore we can see that in fact this expression is just equal to sine 2 pi nx over capital T, meaning that the capital T is really uh, uh, the period. And this uh, applies to cosines and applies to exponentials. So if we don't have a 2 pi periodic function, we don't have to worry. Uh, for any period capital T, we can write the uh, Fourier series of that function as follows. f of x is equal to sum from, uh, of all the n's from minus infinity to infinity, our complex Fourier coefficient cn, times e to the power i, uh, i 2 pi nx over capital T. Where here c, cn's are now given by this expression, before we were dividing by one over two pi, now we are just dividing by some general period one over t, and we are integrating over that period. So we write that down as integral from minus t over two to t over two. And that's it, that concludes our discussion of Fourier series in the complex form.